In this video, I want to give you guys a visual of the new FME 4.5 nasal maxillary expander. These are the first ever publicized images of the FME 4.5 provided to me by Dr. Nuaz, and they were published in my Substack article yesterday. And the key feature of the new FME 4.5 is the use of oblique or diagonally anchored TADs. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Here is FME 4.5, courtesy of Dr. Nuaz. Boom and boom, look at this monster. So here's the anchor body of the FME 4.5. And we know the FME is a two-part construction. You have this chassis, which bolts into the maxilla, or rather screws into the maxilla. This is a 10-TAD version. One, two, three, four, five, another tad there, and then another five on this side. And the key difference between FME 4.5 and FME 3.5, which is the one that was being used in the field by Dr. Nuaz, Dr. Manueli, Casey Lee, and maybe a few others last year, is the diagonal orientation of these tads. Now, why does that matter? Well, in my, my interview with Dr. Lipkin that's set to be posted any day now, he argued that custom Marpy is better than FME because of the ability to integrate obliquely angled tads. Why? Well, traditional Marpy tads are perpendicular to the palate. And when you're perpendicular to the palate and therefore perpendicular to the jack screw, which goes left, right in order to achieve transverse expansion of the palate, you get tad bending or tipping. Well, when you anchor obliquely, you get more bite into the bone because the bone continues in this area. And so you just get more surface area of contact of the tad into the bone. Look at this surface area. Let's call that, I don't know, five millimeters, whereas this might be more like eight. And the orientation of the screw is in line with the expansion itself. So you're less likely to get bending. Okay, great. Very valid argument by Dr. Lipkin that the oblique tads are a superior quality of the custom Marpy as compared to the FME. Well, enter FME 4.5, and you have oblique tads. So why is this important? Well, this is important because when you factor in the integration of oblique tads by the FME, and you add that to the other advantages or features of FME, and we're gonna run through those shortly, I think what you get is a maturation of the nasomaxillary expander market. I think that nasomaxillary expanders have finally found themselves in the FME 4.5. That period of exponential change and growth in nasomaxillary expander technology that took us from dome to, you know, dome obviously being very brutal with its full-on surgical assist. Actually, I wouldn't even call it a surgical assist. I would call it surgery that no one wants to do. No one wants Lafort cuts and general anesthesia just to get a Marpy done. We went from dome to MSE type two, which was fine in some senses. It was posteriorly anchored, but it was very flimsy and only had four tads off the shelf, which meant that you had a ton of failures to split and the appliance would disorient itself in the expansion process just because it was so weak. Then to the development of custom Marpy with Dr. Lipkin and the partner's dental studio, but the problem with the custom Marpy was that it was very anteriorly anchored, and so we were getting a lot of anteriorly biased Pac-Man-like expansions that were more prominent at the front of the palate rather than the back, and that's bad for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's unesthetic. When you flare out the maxilla at the front, you get these big wide front of the palates that don't look great and you kind of can flare out the whole mid face that way and also anterior expansions are not great for nasal airway improvement because the sweet spot for nasal airway improvement is that nice parallel expansion that goes front and back to the back of the nasal cavity and expands things deep and up. Well, FME solves a lot of the problems of those prior expanders. Let's take a look at some of the features of FME. First of all, it's it's a beast. It's extremely robust. It has this two-part construction where you have the anchor body and then you have the expansion body. The way Dr. Nuaz described it is that it is a plate within a box. So very rigid with these big guide rods, unlikely to disorient itself under the tremendous resistance of the skull as it expands. We call that dimensional stability. It also has some other nice features, no appliance arms. Another problem with the custom Marpy is that because the custom Marpies tend to anchor into the teeth to get more stability and strength, sometimes you get a dental response to the custom Marpy. 
In other words, you get dental flaring on the teeth that the expander is attached to, which is not ideal. We want skeletal expansion, not dental flaring. You get in-house cephalometric analysis performed by Facegenics, which means that you're idiot-proofing the orientation and design of the appliance to prevent asymmetry. That's great, because we know asymmetry is the big problem with nasomaxillary expansion. It can be catastrophic. That asymmetry, if it occurs, does not just affect the bite plane, but it goes all the way up the mid-face, even up to the eyes, and can create really wonky, really wonky faces. I suffered from that to some degree, not with a custom Marby, but with a customized MSE Type 2. And I've had other people on my channel, including Ryan, many years ago, who showed a really bad asymmetry from his custom Marby. FME includes a surgical guide to further minimize risk of error when it comes to orienting the appliance and its jack screw, which is, again, key with these Newtonian expanders that just push out left-right. If you orient them at any kind of imperfect angle, you get an imperfect asymmetric expansion in line with the error that was made in the orientation when it was installed. Well, FME has a surgical guide that allows you to pre-drill your tad holes to ensure that when you put the expander in, it is perfectly oriented in accordance with the cephalometric analysis that was done at the lab at by Facegenics. All good stuff makes things more predictable, less dangerous. The expander body is separate from the anchor body. This is what we call the two-piece design of the FME, and we can see that a little bit here. You have the anchor body, and then you have the expander body, which is this separate piece that goes on top of it. This means that you can get access to the pallet if you need to without having to remove tads. Let's say there's a non-union from the piezo cut. Rather than aborting treatment completely and removing the expander, you can just take this top piece off, get access to the pallet underneath, touch things up, let it heal, or if you need more expansion, you can simply replace the body, the expander body, without having to replace the anchor body, which makes it Again, more modular, more user-friendly. Locking tads, what does this mean? This means that these tads that go in actually thread into the expander itself so that there's less wobble, less play, less daylight between the tad head and the expander, which means less tad failure. Guide rods, again, this is part of the robustness of the FME. Now, MSE also had guide rods, but compared to the FME guide rods, they were puny and flimsy, more likely to give in to the resistance forces of the skull. And icing on the cake, the FMA, which is the OEM original equipment manufacturer issued protraction device that anchors right onto the expander itself rather than to hooks that come off of the molars and are only indirectly attached to the skeletal anchorage of the expander. So the point of all that being that FME has all of these really great features that make it a safer, more predictable expander. And now my job as a patient advocate is to find solutions to patients who want to augment their facial structure, solutions that are safe, predictable, and that are not going to screw them up, right? And we know that Nasomax is risky because of asymmetry, especially asymmetry and other stuff. And so to me, FME just checks a lot of boxes in terms of being something I can recommend to patients that is safer. Well, in summary, Dr. Lipkin made a great point about why FME was not perfect quite yet, and that was its lack of oblique tads. Dr. Nuaz made this very important point to me the other day, which is that custom Marpy is actually more likely to get a split than an FME, and that is because custom Marpy is designed to get splits with its oblique tads, its interior anchorage, etc. But FME is more likely to get a clean split if the split actually occurs. In other words, a symmetric split, a posterior expansion. Which leads to the question, what do we define as a successful Marpy case? Is a successful Marpy case just getting a split or getting a diastema? I think that's one component of Marpy success. But the other component of Marpy success is the quality of the split meaning it's parallelity. I know that's not a word, but just go with me on that. And it's posterior bias and it's symmetry. With the oblique tads, I think FME becomes better at getting the split while also preserving that other key quality that's essential to Marpy success, which is not just getting a split, but getting a high quality split. Hence me arguing in this article that FME 
4.5 is like the iPhone X. And what do I mean by that? I mean that I think we're reaching a plateau in the design of these things. I think we'll continue to get minor iterations on this basic design year after year for another decade or two, just like we did with the iPhone 10. But that basic design, having a all glass tablet, tiny bezels, no button, multiple camera lenses, that basic structure that we got with the iPhone 10 that's only been tweaked in subsequent years by Apple with stronger processors, better cameras, better OLED display, better software. The basic structure is there and now it's just a matter of tweaking. So does this mean you should go out and get an FME 4.5? No, I don't think it does. And I say so in the article. I think what we need to do is we need to wait. We need to wait on CBCT proof that this thing is what it says it is. I think we need that substantial data set of FME before and after CBCT superimpositions to prove what seems to be the case on paper, which is that this thing is pretty sweet. But I've been around the jaw hacking world long enough to know that things are not always what they appear to be. So in one year from now, I predict that we'll have those results and we'll know what FME 4.5 expansions actually look like. Are they aesthetic? Are they symmetric? Are we getting a high rate of splits? And at that point, then I will be able to more comfortably say, yeah, it's time to get off the sidelines. The nasal maxillary expander market has reached maturity. If you've been wanting an expander but have been just waiting for this market to settle down and find itself, then we're here finally. That's where I predict we'll be a year from now. So I hope you enjoyed that visual of the FME 4.5. If you didn't know that I had a newsletter, check out my Substack, link in the description. Put out a lot of unique content on there. All my written content is on Substack. Give me a subscribe there. And also check out my upcoming interview with Dr. Lipkin where he makes the case for custom Marpy over FME. And I should say, even Dr. Nuaz, who is an FME provider, he himself states that, and I'll read you his quote, our position on Marpy and FME isn't that one is totally better than the other yet, but that we have different solutions for different situations, and we are liking what one of those solutions is offering in terms of expansion quality. I'm a perfect case. Of course, Dr. Nuaz himself has an FME right now and is getting an expansion with it. Now, this reads to me a little bit like politically correct fence sitting, but that is his explicit position, so I would say keep that in mind. All right, everyone, I'll check you all soon. Peace.